Hi, thanks for joining me today as we look at the Celestron Astromaster 130 EQ telescope. Okay, so we're going to begin to unbox the whole thing now. This big, heavy metal, sturdy thing. I mean, that weighs a lot. Big, sturdy steel tripod. Extendable, very strong, very heavy. I'm sure that'll do a great job. There's the money shot right there. We have the Astromaster 130 by Celestron in all its glory. I mean, that basically is what we're looking at here. So I'm gonna lay all the parts out now so you can see everything that's in the box. And then we're gonna make a start at the assembly process. So here we are now in the man cave for Review Monkey, and this is the um, Celestron 130 EQ telescope, and it's now fully unboxed. I'm now gonna show you all the pieces that are in the box, so you can see for yourself what, what it comes with. Okay, so after a quick look at the instructions, I figured out what some of these things are. So obviously we've got the telescope and the tripod. We've got the slow motion cables. This is an accessory tray. This is the equatorial mount. We have the bracket to put the tripod, attach the telescope to the tripod. We have the counterweights here and counterweight bar, which work with the slow motion cables. We have the lenses and the Starfinder scope as well. So the next job, I think, is to get all this stuff bolted together and see if we can get this thing to look like an actual telescope rather than a pile of bits on the floor. So that's now neatly in place. It, it fits securely around the middle of the tripod there. And these are all fitted nicely in the edges. So that's the accessory tray fitted. Okay, so looking at the mount, this needs to go on top of the tripod here, but it's in the wrong position. So looking at the pictures, what you need is, this needs to be, this needs to twist that way so that this bit here has got the numbers on the top. So it came in the box that way, twist it that way. And then this should now begin to go onto the tripod. So that goes anti-clockwise because you turn it from underneath. So now we have, we have the mount. that locks. So we've got the numbers on here and this piece you can adjust the elevation and you can lock it in position with this piece. It seems to lock quite well. Actually it turns as well. Just tighten that up so it's turning. That goes there, and this obviously moves in that direction. So far, so good. Now I'm threading the latitude adjustment bolt or latitude adjustment screw into the mount, and it should eventually hit the base of the, of the mount. So we'll turn it in until we can't go any further. So, so far, quality of parts, Reasonably good, you know. Oh, there you go. As you can see, as that turns, 
it's just the latitude. Very good. Now we put the counterweight bar into the end of the mount there, like so. And the counterweights can go on there to counterweight the weight of the telescope. All, all very good so far. Now remove the screw from the end of the counterweight bar. And I think I now need to place the counterweights on here. Okay, so this was a troubling part because these are the counterweights and you're supposed to put the counterweights on here they won't go on. And the reason they won't go on, if you can see, there is, I don't know if you can see there, there, there you go, you can probably see now, there's a bolt inside it. So because there's a bolt inside it, how can it go on? But what I figured out is, you undo this, and as you undo it, as you'll see, the bolt is still inside it. But fear not, the bolt should fall out if you tap it. So the bolt has now fallen on the floor twice, but you can see now that the hole is clear. So what I should be able to do, get the counterweights, put it about half up the bar, put the lug back in, and then screw that. Second counterweight and lock. Then safety screw goes underneath. Have our counterweights installed. Okay, onto the slow motion cables. So we'll loosen these little bolts, push it on, tighten it up. There must be another one somewhere. Slow motion cables as they're called. I want to come back to these cables here because initially we wasn't sure what, what value they added or what they did. And I've since realized that there's a small, obviously screw here, and there's a flat part there on the bar. What you have to do, you have to get this screw onto the flat part so that it makes purchase and actually spins. So once you've got it in position, you need to tighten it with a screwdriver. And now you'll see that that actually turns the whole telescope. Gives you very minute adjustments on the settings. So same with this one, you've again got, can you see that there? You've still got a screw that goes in. So you need to get that on the flat part, because but if you can just see the flat part there. On the flat part of the bar. So get your screw on that part and tighten it up with a screwdriver to give it some purchase. And now you'll see that 
moves the telescope left and right for intricate adjustments when you're trying to hone in on the stars and planets. If you forget to use a screwdriver or line it up on that flat part, these cables will have no effect whatsoever. It's not explained in the instructions at all, so I thought I'd highlight it on here for you. So when you unpacked it, you took this bracket off. See this, this bracket here, and you'll need to put this bracket back on. So just put it so that you've got the name there and this bit at the front here. What I've done now is I've just screwed these back, these two screws back so that the tripod can slot in there and then I'm sure I'll, I'll be tightening them back up again. We're quite secure, we're quite well fitted. Let's say, let you have a look at it now. So now I'm going to show you this piece. We're going to unscrew this lens cap. And we're going to take this um, eyepiece and we're going to put the eyepiece into here. So we'll take it out of the box, try not to touch the lens. So it's stainless steel that side, nice soft eye part there. And what I need to do now, after I've shown you it, is put the Stainless steel side in, so we'll remove the screws so we've got access. Slide it in and then just tighten the screws. Not too tight. That's the eyepiece done. So, for the Starfinder scope, I believe we just pull this plastic thing out and it should, if you see that there, it should give us the power. There's a battery in there and that would allow the battery to work now. Okay guys, now this was not in the instructions, but what I figured out on the Starfinder is that there's quite a few wheels on it and things. Now this wheel here, as you can possibly see, it's got two white dots. When you turn this one, you hear a click and it, it actually does a little switch. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's a little, little red light in there. Just a little red dot there. So now, when I turn the wheel the other way, you hear it clicking on and off. So that's how you turn the Starfinder on and off. This little switch here with the two white dots. So not mentioned in the instructions, worth a little bit of a play around before I went ahead and installed it, which I believe is going onto, onto here. So now we know how to turn it on and off with the side switch here. So back to the Starfinder, I figured out how to fit it onto the, onto the top here. There's a couple of screws on the side, so we just go ahead and loosen those screws a little bit, just to give it a little bit of movement, and then it slides onto there, like so, and you get it on so far, and then you just tighten the screws on the other side, and it's secured onto the telescope. Lots of different movement directions here. But yeah, star, star finder's looking good. Turn it on, turn it off. So far, so good. So that is installation complete. Thank you so much for staying with me. We've unboxed it, we've looked at the instructions, we've gone through the setup, we've covered a few things that aren't quite explained in the instructions, so we've got one thing left to do now, and that's take the lens cap off. Now, by looking through the eyepiece here, we can actually use the telescope. The light will come in through the front here into the mirrors, and then we'll get the enhanced view through the eyepiece here. So hopefully, I can show you some 
some shots of the actual telescope in use. We'll have a look at the software and paperwork that comes with it. Um, quite a big pack here. Let's see what we get. So we've got a Celestron disc, um, multi-language manual. There's an app you can go on, Star Sky Portal app. We'll have a look at that. Warranty card. More software you can download. So there's a free software with it as well. Um, instructions for the star pointer finder scope. And then you've got the, looks like a quick start guide. Setup guide there, shows you how to set it up. That should be handy. And then finally, the actual instruction booklet of all the help and support you could need. So if you're new to the hobby, I think there's quite a lot of information here to get you going.